Oh my, you're wonderful. You're oh. <laughs> <laughs> Coco's thinking of a different scenario. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, you're right. They're so beautiful. <laughs> you're so beautiful. I mean, they. Oh, ooh, they. So <laughs> <laughs> She's just as bad as Mel. <laughs> Well then, hello everyone and welcome back to Floor Pixels. Coco and Kanetsu are here and we are continuing the house in Theta Morgana. Yay! Okay. I think this was right after a little time skip. Once there was a girl, and she was locked away in a mansion deep in the forest. A mansion with only one window. But the window sat high upon the wall, far, over, far beyond her reach. Unlike so it was always very dark inside, unlike this mansion. However, the girl did not like the outside world. There were lots of scary things out there, after all. Though she may have been all alone in the mansion, she grew comfortable with the darkness in time, so she had nothing to be afraid of. And then... Um, am I doing a good job? You're doing fine. Keep going. What happens next? Okay. And then the girl grew up. By then, she had already forgotten why she was locked up, but she was content with the darkness. However, her eyes couldn't help but be drawn to the little bit of light that spilled through one window. Though she was comfortable in the darkness, the sight of the light made her heart race. At first, the girl thought it was because she found it unpleasant, because she disliked the light and the outside. But slowly, she came to realize that she was curious about the outside world. What could be happening out there? For all she knew, the town the forest, the people, all of it could have changed while she was imprisoned in the mansion. But she had no way of finding out. So the girl decided to write letters and throw them out the window. What began as empty grasping became routine, continuing for several months until she was finally ready to give up. But then, a beautiful white dove flew in through the window. Tied to the dove's leg was a letter. Letters, mansion. <gasps> Not the letter. No. <laughs> Her heart racing. She read the words contained within. It seemed to have been written by a man. The letter contained numerous questions for the girl. It also said that if she attached her reply to the dove, it would bring the letter back to him. She was astonished, but she wrote him back anyway, taking care not to mention where she was. After having exchanged letters a number of times, the two felt very close to one another, as though they had known each other for many years, despite having never met. And eventually, the man... Said he wanted to meet her. Indeed. The girl was unsure what to do. That's how people get kidnapped. <laughs> Should she tell him of how she lived? Should she reveal where she spent her days? She was afraid if she did, 
he would cease to send her letters. Not too much shades. We just started, and uh, this is just the white-haired girl telling Mel about the story of a girl who was trapped in a mansion for a very long time. Uh, letters are, <laughs> yeah. Um, she grew up there for many years, never going outside, and she was really happy in there because she was afraid of the outside world. But she got curious, and so she just started writing letters and throwing them outside, and then someone began responding. Oh, um, she was afraid if she did, he would cease to send her letters. She was sure he believed her to be a young lady of noble blood. Nope. And not a girl locked away in a house deep in the forest. The girl could not bring herself to write a response. She released a dove through the window with nothing attached to its leg. And yet it returned with another letter written in the man's familiar hand. You must surely have a grave reason for your silence, it said. I would like to know that reason. And I would like to help you. No matter what it may be, you have my word. She deliberated. Though his letters were kind, she did not know this man. He was from the outside. Would he still treat her the same way when he had when he met her? And did she even want to step out into the world beyond? What do you think she did? Wrote a letter and agreed to meet him, right? Yes, she did. The girl made up her mind. She would write a letter. As always, when she tied it to the dove's leg, it flew off out the window. And for some time after that, she received no response from the man. This saddened her, but she thought it was for the best. She belonged in her own confined world, her world of darkness. But then one day, light shone into the mansion. The sealed door had been opened, and in the doorway stood a handsome young man. I have come for you, he said. The man was a prince from a neighboring kingdom. When the girl stepped outside, before her sat a magnificent carriage, the likes of which she had never before seen, accompanied by many servants. The prince, kind as in the letters, swore his love to her, and the two lived happily ever after. Ah, what a nice story. I'm glad it had a happy ending. <laughs> a prince. Um, was there something funny about the story? No, no, that's not why I was laughing. Do you ever imagine what it would be like if a prince showed up for you? Huh? It doesn't have to be a real prince. Even just someone like one. Like me, please notice me. <laughs> Is that something you dream about? Oh, you know... Um, I think I'm um, perhaps a bit... a little too old for that. You think so? Nelly still fantasizes about her prince, and she's 14. I just assumed all girls were the same. Lady Nelly's prince. That's you, Lord Mel. No? Well... Is it not? I mean, we used to play make-believe a lot when we were kids, but I very much doubt she still thinks of me the way that way in earnest. Mm. When she calls me her prince now, it's mostly in jest. Mm. 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 You are blind. <laughs> she even knows. Yeah, you're she's blind. like, uh, hmm. 
If it weren't, that would be concerning. Oh? Uh... That story, do you know if it's a regional tale? One that's been passed down through the ages? I am not sure. It could very well be of my father's own creation. Um, you might think me conceited, but I think the story might be about me. The girl trapped in the mansion is you. Y you haven't been locked up anywhere before, have you? N no, thankfully. I've never been locked up before. Thank goodness. But with an appearance like mine, I can sympathize with her being afraid of the outside world. Too beautiful to go outside, huh? <laughs> I have at times imagined how wonderful life would be. If it were only me and my father. But the girl left the house in the end. If your father really wrote that story, then I believe it contains his hope for you to end up the same way. Oh? I don't have what it takes to be a real prince and whisk you away, but... I can at least pretend. So if it was your father's wish for you to see the outside world... Then surely there's nothing wrong with you getting out and experiencing all the scenery that world has to offer. I want to see the outside too. Or, to be more specific, other countries. <laughs> Man, gosh, Shades, being polite and you know, exhibiting common courtesy? Nah. Nah. What is that? So, so, uh... If you'd like, we... Could maybe go see distant lands together. Oh! <laughs> oh, dearest Mel. I have been looking all over for you. N Nelly. Look at this, dear smell. Mother brought me these wonderful gloves to wear on walks. <laughs> <laughs> the roses embroidered on the wrist are just precious. Oh my, you're wonderful. You're. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Coco's thinking of a different scenario. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, you're right. They're so beautiful. <laughs> you're so beautiful. I mean, they. Oh, ooh, they. So <laughs> <laughs> She's just as bad as Mel. <laughs> hmm? You appear to be dizzy, Lord Mel. Are you feeling unwell? N no, I'm fine. <laughs> Mel was feeling frustrated at his inability to convey his feelings to her. And as his frustration built up over time, he developed, I suppose you could call it, a severe case of lovesickness. I don't know her name, and I never asked for her name, but I love her. <laughs> For several consecutive nights, he had been afflicted with a peculiar sensation. A presence in his bedchamber. <gasps> it's the ghost lady. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Death! <laughs> Death to the unholy room! <laughs> Tori! Death to the heretic! Death to the witch! 
Well. I know it's making you shake in your boots, right? (laughs) (laughs) Jeez. Why? I never wanted her to die. Was she not eating? Oh, two people. What? Three people. Seal off the tower. Understood? No one finds out about this. How can you be so calm? Don't you understand what you've done? Huh the blame on me. How nice it must be to be able to distort reality with panic. (gasps) You're just as guilty as any of us. I... I never wanted her to die. Luigi's gone. Why do you have to remind me? Oh no. The witch killed her. The blood of the witch killed my. <laughs> Whoa, what is going on? <laughs> I have no idea. I do not remember this at all. Ugh. <sighs> Ah! A, a dream? What was that dream? It was horribly unsettling. I was holding someone, a girl I cared for dearly, in my arms, and she was limp. It was almost as if she were dead. I've been having a lot of really unpleasant dreams lately. I can't stop shaking. Why would I have such a dream? I feel sick. (laughs) Back to sleep. But I wonder, who was that girl? Why haven't I asked her name yet? Maybe if I had, I would be able to recognize her. (laughs) I can sense someone standing beyond my door. Is someone there? Who is that masked man? It's like they're watching me. Is it just my imagination? I can't move. What? What do you want? Go away! Ah. The sound is growing fainter. I thought that said the dead girl. (laughs) (laughs) Is that truly what's your... Is that truly what your story meant? Father. But I... Such a magnificent garden. Something we could never have had. Are my intentions... Misguided. What a beautiful white rose. Whoa! You know, you could have sneaked into his room rather easily then. 
no one was watching. <laughs> uh, how long have you... Oh, you needn't pay me any mind. Hi, Nomonica. Hello, Nomonica. I shall not condemn you, no matter what you might do. Rather, I am on your side. Why is that? Yeah. I was not... I was not going to do anything. Oh? Is that so? Then perhaps you were out for a late night stroll. I imagine you have less difficulties going outside at night. The vampire? <laughs> That's what Shade suggested the last stream. <laughs> I beg your pardon. I will return to the mansion immediately. Oh yes, that reminds me. It was also the middle of the night when the grocer's servant broke into your, their safe. News of that spread quite far. I am sure you would have heard about it. Oh? Although, was Gimashk imprisoned? Dear me, I am having trouble remembering. But worry not, if you wish for it, the mansion shall provide. You are no danger whatsoever of getting caught. Uh, I... You said that a witch lives in the mansion, did you not? I did. Does that sound, perhaps, a bit archaic to you? No. I believe those rumors mockingly refer to me. Oh my. I have been accused of being a witch before. Which is amusing. I don't have any magical powers. I simply- what? Whoa, whoa. Okay. What? <laughs> I simply have an unusual appearance. Her eyes just moved, didn't they? Yeah, and also the rose changed color. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My, what a lovely shade of red. Uh, the rose. Is something the matter? This rose was white until I took it in my hand. <laughs> Is that so? I apologize. I must sound mad. I'm sure I was just mistaken. It couldn't possibly have changed. I wonder... Yes. Did the girl locked in the mansion become a princess? What? We should lock up and head to bed. Make sure all the shutters are closed nice and tight, and then draw the bar on the front door. Mm hmm. Slowly, but surely, time trekked onward, everyone working toward their own individual goals. Each early summer breeze that blew through the garden was like God's hollowed breath, carrying the flower fragrance in through the Rose Manor's windows. If only time could be stopped in this beautiful era made to live on through eternity. As usual, Mel's eyes chased after the white-haired girl, and Nellie pursed her lips in frustration at him. But she was still rather docile. 
even taking into account how self-centered she behaved, how fickle her temple, Nellie's fits were still no worse than a playful kitten. See, at that very moment, a lively little feline had her claws poised to swat at the flaxen-haired young man. <laughs> Mel, you promised me, or have you forgotten? I haven't forgotten, I'm just asking if we can go another day. Another day? This isn't something that happens every day. I've been looking forward to tonight's performance for so long. There's nothing I can do about that. We're having a gathering at the priest's home tonight. Several high-ranking officials have come up from the mainland just for this. Who cares? I, I care. You know, Nellie, it doesn't have to be me who goes with you. No, I want to go with you, Mel. You've been so distant lately, dearest Mel. Aw, oh, thank you for the bits, Justin. Thank you. If you refuse to do anything with me... That's not true. Tell me, if you can't go today, when can you go? Next year. When will you be willing to go out with me? It's not so far away. <laughs> when will you be willing to play cards with me? To have tea together? I... Can't make any promises, not even for next year. <gasps> I have. <laughs> I have things to do. Obligations. And Nellie, you're almost an adult yourself. Stop acting like such a child. I'm not an adult yet. I'm still a kid. If it means I don't get to play with you anymore, dear Smell, then I don't want to be an adult. Nelly, you can't... Lady Nelly, the Master wishes to speak with you. Huh? Father does. What could he want? G go on, Nelly. You can't make Father wait. He's very particular about people keeping their appointments. Yes, he is. Unlike you, dear Smell. What's got her in such a foul mood? <gasps> oh my god, I love her. <laughs> <laughs> Kanetsu just wants to marry all the maids. <laughs> yes, please. Oh, thank goodness for small miracles. Nelly just won't seem to take me at my word lately. You mustn't be so harsh on her. She is your one and only darling little sister. You're right, but still, she's taken us a bit too far of late. Oh? I'm not so sure. She does not seem to be behaving any differently to me. Give me all the maids. Hmm... Am I the one acting, acting differently, then? Well, enough about that. Can I ask you a favor? Kickstarter for Kanetsu's maid harem. <gasps> yes! <laughs> Me? What can I do for you? I was thinking... Physically, Mel was undeniably a young man, but the smirk that crossed his lips as he schemed gave his face the sweet look of a little boy. Well, perhaps that was simply part of his charm, and it was not the age disparity, but his character that made his smile so heartwarming. See you, Justin. Have a good night. What did he ask of me? <laughs> you shall find out soon enough. It's cloudy. I'm 
thank goodness for that, too. And though it would be even better... ...if it were even darker out. Hmm. I believe the textile shop was around here. Uh... Hi there. Lord Mo, uh, fancy meeting you here. Yeah, what a surprise. Ooh, your uh, microphone's acting up a little. Could you uh, try re-entering call? Okay. <laughs> yeah, what a surprise. So, uh, what do you say we take this chance and go for a little walk? still happening. So, uh, what do you say we take this chance and go for a little walk? Allison. Bertha. Ugh! <laughs> no! <laughs> Agatha. <laughs> no, just the way you said it. <laughs> Since you're sensitive to the sunlight, we can keep our eyes out for shadowy areas as we go. And if you feel unwell, just let me know. Don't die, life alone. Uh, um, I will set out to run an errand. Don't worry about that. Come on, follow me. Um, I'm sorry. It, uh, actually wasn't an accident that we crossed paths. Mm -hmm. I planned this out ahead of time, asked to have you sent out on a fake errand. I'm creepy like that, I know. It feels like I'm always on alert back at the mansion. <laughs> Can't relax in my own house. It's actually kind of funny. Response. <laughs> oh. Sorry, that was inappropriate of me. I just thought since the sun's mostly blocked out, it would be alright if. Um, I'm feeling just fine. Our pixels cookies here with my guests, Buttons, Jamie, and Brandon, and we are continuing Ace Attorney Phoenix Wright. Eh, let's just do some snooping around here. Look at every hat. There's a security guard uniform hanging here. Where? It looks more like a McCree cosplay than a uniform, <laughs> honestly. A leather jacket, a leather pants, a leather... A belt buckle that says Banff. What was that called again? A punchy? Ponchi? Pinchy? Oh, oh! I know! A Poochie! I'm gonna call, mm. call him Ponchies. Mm, wait, maybe that wasn't it. <laughs> yeah, it was... Oh, I thought it was Stormin'. It's a poncho. But I think I'll keep that information to myself for the time being. <laughs> <laughs> 